Well, here we are at Jacktown Pub at the corner of State Route 13 and the National Road. Fine pickup truck for sale. Held together with some straps. Got the bed held on there with the big straps, so that was cool. The National Road. If you don't know anything about the National Road, there's quite a bit to look up on. It's the nation's first major road. Going all the way back to General Braddock and George Washington. It was a very important route, and it kind of still is. By kind of still is, I'm saying that the, um, the route still exists, really. It's a, um, it still exists in that Interstate 70 runs parallel with it just over the way. So, in that sense, the National Road's still active. Now, Interstate 70 runs all the way out to Denver, I believe, is the terminus. Definitely out to Colorado. So, the National Road had its terminus in St. Louis. And that, if you're a purist, <laughs> I've read that that isn't so. I've, I've read that Effingham, Illinois, is the real terminus. But for most of us, we can say the National Road ran from Baltimore to St. Louis. Now, it's not as popular as Route 66, but at one time it certainly had more business on it than Route 66. Turn you back around so you can go on the ride. I don't know how far we'll go today, I'd just like to come down here and explore it. Now, where we picked it up is, oh, about 25 miles east of Columbus. And we're heading east towards Zanesville. It's a really windy day out, but I had some time. My other jobs were slow. So I decided to go ahead and try another video. This is Linville. There's a lot of small towns that just kind of faded away. They had their purpose in their days. You know, I don't, I'm not sure what Linville's is. I'd have to try to find out. Some of the history is so obscure that you can't even find out just by looking it up on the internet, you know. Somebody knows, but... They may have been a, a stop for horses or, you know, the uh, it used to be a pike road. So, that means people used to pay tolls to get on it. And there's a lot of little towns that were pike towns, you know. They, it's where toll gates were and lodging and things of that nature. And some of the old inns from the horse-drawn days are, are still out here, even in Ohio. I don't know how, for how long they'll be here because more and more keeps disappearing on this road every year. But the road started and then it dwindled. It dwindled when the trains came. 
because the train was much more efficient than trying to slog through the dirt and mud on the national road. Then strangely enough, bicyclists wanted the national road improved. So that kicked off a improvement on the national road. Then of course by the time the automobile came, people really wanted to see the road improved again. Things took off. And though we may have some romantic notions of the road, from what I've been told from really old folks that drove on it, it was a dangerous road. So what we're seeing right now is a different phase of the road than what cars would have been driving on, say, in the 30s and 40s. The alignments, as they say, are are different. Sometimes all the alignments match up, but uh, maybe we'll get to see an old alignment today. And we'll even get into spaces that are four lanes. And it's, it's a nice road to have because if something happens out on the interstate, traffic can be rerouted to 40. It's not a pretty sight when it happens, but it's an alternative route. And if you look closely, every once in a while you'll see a mile marker. Some of them are just fake fiberglass ones, but some of them are the real concrete mile markers from days gone by. The reason you have fiberglass lookalikes is there's one right there. That's a real one. The uh, reason you have the lookalike mile markers is because the concrete are a safety hazard. In some spots they have to be removed because if a car hits them they become of course a, a danger. So they put up they put up lookalikes. They have covered up this monument. This was the eagle's nest. We'll get out and have a look at the plaque here. Obviously they've wrapped it up and there's not much to see. It's probably been, uh, probably been eroding. It looked really bad the last time I seen it. So this is the uh, monument. And as you can see, it's all wrapped up because it is eroding. This was done a long time ago and it just used cement to hold everything together. And uh, the plaque explains that for nearly 50 years prior to 1914, almost no maintenance had been carried out on the pike. By the early 20th century, bicyclists, automobile owners, the postal service, and the trucking industry were demanding better roads. The large granite rock at this site, known as the Eagle's Nest, commemorates the experimental paving of 29 miles of the National Road from Zanesville to Hebron between 1914 and 1916. So they were uh, trying to get better roads then. There's what it would have been like without the pavement. The cars are all stuck in the mud. And there's the steam powered machines that are doing the work to make the new pavement. And then we've got the cars celebrating the pavement being done. And as you can see, it's not a very wide road at all. All right, let's keep Exploring down the road a bit. 
This is the town of Grayshot. This pink building has definitely aged a lot recently. This is close to Flint Ridge. Flint Ridge is three miles away from here. And it's an interesting quarry where the Indians would get their flint. As I was saying earlier, at times it turns into a four-lane road. So uh, this is the part where it's done that. I don't know. I could only guess that this probably went four-lane before Interstate 70 was completed. But I could be wrong. And if you look to the left sometimes, you'll see where the really old, well, I don't know exactly which alignment, but there's alignments left over there to the left. It's uh, still got homes on it, and it's still maintained. And of course, Dollar General. Dollar Generals are everywhere. got an old school there on the right and then I believe that this used to be yeah this would be an old gas station right here they uh they've got quite a collection of stuff a lot of lawnmowers campers You will often see a lot of uh, places that look like they should be on pickers. And that little stand there was probably the office to a roadside motel. Slowly but surely all the roadside motels are disappearing. And I think it's because they weren't really made that well. I think there's another, yep, there's another mile marker. But the old motels weren't really made that well, and they're not designed to be suitable for a lot of today's needs. So people just don't stay at them. I've, I've stayed at some in other places, and the... Uh, it's not what you'd think. It's not a romantic stay. The uh, the heating systems rarely work right. The air conditioners might be super loud. It's it's uh, it's not uncommon for it to be a really really rough stay. See how that road shoots up on that ridge? That was part of an old alignment. And some of them still are brick. Yeah, there's an S bridge over there, but we couldn't see it. And you can't stop there anymore. They don't have the, uh, the parking like they used to. of uh, nasty looking old equipment there. There's an old motel there, at least the office to one. Now right 
right up here we got an interesting inn. I'm always surprised that these have survived this long. They're probably early 1800s. There it is right there. I've heard that they're haunted. <laughs> very, very cool. And there's a huge Goodwill Industries. giant Now we're going to cross under Interstate 70. I was looking to see if they still had an A&W root beer, and they do not. Yeah, they do. There's an A&W root beer in there. You can still get you a Coney and a root beer. At least last time I was in there, you could. Quite a uh, collection of cement yard stuff. Zanesville is an interesting place because uh, it would have been a hub of activity during the Pike days. It still has a lot going on. There's quite a few businesses down here. But you can feel the history in this place. So we'll have a look around here. There's an old Sinclair gas station with a Woody. Well, that's just the sign. I don't know what that business would have been. Have a look here if it doesn't look too bad. Sometimes, sometimes there are rough characters to be seen here. Okay, I uh, goofed off with my old Canon T5i. I forget how much fun that camera is. Old DSLRs are fun.
But let's take let's take this for a ride. Let's take the uh, Osmo Pocket 2 and have a look around Zanesville. I know that I got a video from not too long ago of Zanesville, but today we're going to explore a little deeper off of the National Road since we're here. grading we just crossed was for the canal so the boats could go through the canal To the left, we have the courthouse. They keep a really nice courthouse. That's a Catholic church there. I could be wrong, but uh, if memory serves, that's what it is. So we're going to get off the National Road now. And we'll see what's up here. This would be 22 West. We'll have a look around the old neighborhoods here. boy have been there before hmm. muddy misers that place is usually pretty busy haven't been there before
Center. Historical Society, built in 1805. The age of some of these homes is uh, definitely very old. Start of our country type old. columns. Isn't that cool? Wow. Still got some old brick streets. gas station. Let's see what else we got down here. Bob Sweeper Mart. Give him a little bit of advertisement there. Sometimes these old towns, you can find uh, some of the old trades going on, like sweeper fixing. I once found a uh, cobbler. I wanted to turn around and get a shot of the uh, Statue of Liberty. The liquor store. Isn't that something? Putnam Tavern. Mm. Love it. Beer Dock is a fancy place. Heck yeah. Roll your own tobacco. I gotta admit I've done that for a time or two.
And we're in South Zanesville now. This is pretty much my what I call everywhere America. It's all the same stuff. Not too many things unique to Zanesville here, so I'll turn it around and we'll go explore some of the unique parts until we uh until we don't. The uh driving abilities sometimes amaze me. I've been following that guy for quite a while and he was <laughs> straddling the center lane. It's like uh it's just crazy how bad they are. But we'll head back into the old part. You know, sometimes when I'm in these historical areas that are really bad, I'm just thinking, wouldn't the best plan of action be to pick a few of the best buildings, save those and restore those really, really well, and then go ahead and let the rest of the neighborhood start anew? I'm sure many people disagree with me. But it seems like every time something historical is torn down, people cry and wail about it. But it's like, okay, what what was your plan then? You know, it's uh, you can't save it all if you want to progress. We're not Europe. These buildings were not made to withstand the test of time. At least most of them were not. Some ghost advertising there. The old Pepsi. I like that. Go back by the uh, Statue of Liberty once more. The look on her face is priceless. I love Bob Sweeper Mart's sign. If I remember right, there's a park off here to the right. So we'll go down and see what's there. I know the last time I was in it, it was... I'd like to say just sketchy. But I'd probably have to say frightening. To be accurate. What a beautiful building. There's not much left of the parking lot here. Putnam Landing. Let's see what's going on at Putnam Landing. Well, it looks like they're dredging it or something. I think that's part of the canal system over there. geese are enjoying it. No swimming allowed. We'll see what the geese had to say. Yeah, I'd have to say that's a lock over there. Huh. I'll have to check that out sometime. It's not all the same type of geese down here. They look like they got the... 
farm geese. That's interesting. Well, you see everything, don't you? <laughs> Got a horse. Kind of cool, actually. Kind of cool. Might have been out drinking and things are just uh, more interesting on a horse. Can collector there. Helping us keep the streets clean. Up here on the right, we have a sculptor. And I'll have to uh, look up his name. But he is quite the artist. And you can go in and look around. Stone Church there. Well, we made it to the north side of town. I figured I'd save you the uh, stoplights and things. There is the Angry Bull, a notable biker bar of sorts. Not necessarily just a biker bar, but a, a bar. And the Blue Front, I don't know if that's open right now, but that, uh, that's been another mainstay for quite some time. Quite an interesting building, though, I must say. I like the sign. 